Geek Citadel. Welcome to Playing Games with Kevin Jones, and this is Bullets, or Blues and Bullets. And uh, we're going to go ahead and have a blast here. Now, this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do something called Talking Points, which is pretty much explain exactly what the game's about, and then show a little bit of each section of the game. And there's three different sections in this game. But first, I want to show a little bit about uh, what the computer is about. I got sneeze. Hold on. Huh? Ah. All right. Anyway, I've been sick a little bit, so I thought I was going to sneeze. I might sneeze a little bit, but whatever. Yeah. Just basic stuff. Nothing really stands out. There's no advanced options or anything like that. Just choose your resolution, etc., etc. Audios, basic, move up and down, stuff like that. Like this game was clearly intended with console gamers in mind as well as PC gamers. So, I'm going to get in just a little bit more so you can see one of the more pivotal parts of the game. And that'll be the shooting part. So this game is about Elliot Ness in an alternate reality where Capone is pretty much exactly the same kind of stuff. Still kind of untouchable style stuff, but uh, instead, Elliot Ness goes to find Capone and try to kill him. You call your boss. I have business to settle with him. Chill out, Andy. Can't even enjoy a quiet smoke. Look, I get it. It's Christmas. You're lonely and you want to end it all. But Santa Esperanza is full of bridges. Why not throw yourself off one of them and leave me a piece? Tell Capone that Elliot Ness is here. We're going to finish this thing once and for all. Yeah. Jesus. Finish it. I can enough. Listen. You got it backwards. I'm not here to make my boss come out. I'm here to stop you getting in. So here's one of the key parts of the game, which is to make a decision. But this is not one of the hardcore decisions. Like Telltale games, they have choices. So some of the choices affect how the game unfolds a little bit. So in that way, it's a little linear. So let's find out what happens if I threaten this man. Santa Claus for crutches, because if you don't do what I say, they're going to be the perfect gift for you. Maybe I could borrow a pair from your buddy, Dockers. I hear he's never going to need him again. You shouldn't have brought that up. Oh no? You gonna cry now? Hey, come on. It's Christmas. That glass broke late. <laughs> So here's the dynamic shooting part. Put down your weapons. You'll get a fair trial. So you can either use the mouse and keyboard or shoot with the controller like I'm using here. My problem with this though is if you switch between mouse and keyboard, it doesn't change the key like the keys at all. I like Telltale games that recognize that you switch to mouse and keyboard. This game just says, hey, I'm still using the controller, which is messed up. So I'm just going to use the controller. Now you see why that's a problem later. Because He's coming! It, this is like many of games uses uh, quick time events. So if you are using the mouse, it won't switch to, to the buttons for the keys so you don't know what to do so you have to switch back to the controller real quickly and hope you don't die headshot and this this part's really linear all you can really do is move back and forth between cover and I don't even see why you would have to do it It's 
pretty much a like a time crisis style of uh, remember time crisis like like reload reload it's really in that vein of virtual cop and time crisis because you don't have any control over where the Elliot goes or anything like that it's also really easy to kill all these dudes it's not really difficult or anything See, here comes the quick time event part. If you were using the mouse right now, you would know where to push. You would have to switch back to the, to the controller. So that's kind of a flaw. Admittedly, it's not a big flaw. One of the things I do like about this game is that it does excel in style. Like later on, it shows off pretty much its uh, artistic side, and I do like the, the black and white and red stuff going on here. Like even if the characters kind of like, uh, kind of mm, questionable, everything else is really nice. Style wise, it's kind of Sin City esque in that, uh, in the way it flows. So you saw the the shooting portion, which is number one on the our list here. Now you're gonna see the decision part. on East Main. One of the jerks who'd been screwing with me for months. Mm -hmm. We had to make an example of him. Oh, then this Send man a message to the other storekeepers. <laughs> Danunzio ripped out his guts and hung him up with the merchandise. But he did it while the butcher's daughter was watching. The gangster with a conscience. Danunzio. There are lines that cannot be crossed. We have to protect the innocence of children. I wonder why Capone's far, face looked like that. Away from he looks terrible. Your son should know what kind of monster his father is. I can't think of a better life lesson. Look, Vittorio. <laughs> his hand's shaking. Booze turns men into cowards. You'll be like your father. Never drink. It's funny, huh? The white knight of the Volstead Act gets licked up to kill the king of bootleg boys. Ah, uh, I get it. Relax, son. Nobody's going to kill anybody. I'd love to introduce you to a girl your age, Vittorio. Her name is Claire Dockers, and she sings like an angel. You two would get along. 
So two days that ago, Claire was the decision the part. In a warehouse. Your father was hitting innocent people, and that's not right. He told him to stop, but your father ignored him and pulled out a gun to shoot him. Claire's father was quicker. He drew his gun first and fired, but the bullet jammed. Your father killed Claire's father in cold blood. He kicked him in the face so many times, not even Claire herself would have recognized him. You'll never prove I killed Darkus. I know, and that's why I'm here. But now I know I'm better than you. Might have saw those dudes, you cute. Your father is a murderer, <laughs> and Claire hasn't stopped crying these you last kinda two are days, too. all because of him. Never forget that, Vittorio. It's busting and killed a bunch of dudes. Like, yeah. Bird time. Hold it. Let him go. Run, Ness, and forget I exist, or I'll have to report what you just did. And I do have witnesses. You hear me, Ness? And that's pretty much the decision part. So we're going to head back to the present. 31 Wicker Avenue. This is it. So this is the investigation part of the game. I'm sure. At last. That stench of steel grease about you reminds me too much of my old job. I smell it grease? Yeah, I don't think anyone else had noticed. But when you spend a part of your sentence as a chef in the kitchens on Gore Island, you smell it a mile away. And how do you think I met Alphonse? Playing golf? Ooh. Alphonse. On the subject of cooking, I know your blueberry pie had an extra something. I still don't know what. Alphonse. So what now? You got a plan? Take a look around in case there's a rear exit. I'll take the main door. My pleasure. Yeah, get to work. So, now that we're in the investigation part here, let's go ahead and the do some checking like stuff out. Up his shingle in broad daylight says a lot about Santa Esperanza. I'm gonna head inside. We don't need to check out any of this other stuff. One of my only problems with this game is, well, mostly the animation is kind of stiff. Baccarini? Carlo Baccarini? Yo, Baccarini, open his door! Interest out back. Sorry. You better come see this, Mr. Ness. See? Kind of wonky what animations like that. I don't know how to describe it. Gross. Gross. Another key point about this game is that it is really violent. Which you're about to see right now. Is that our man? Baccarini. My God. Baccarini. We have to find out who did this and why. <laughs> Let's go. You're the detective, Mr. Ness. Besides, Alfonso will want to see this. I'll be right back. All right. I think we got to the point where I have to establish how Baccarini died. You can always tell when people the body are using motion capture for the, the characters. But here we are. This is where we get into the investigation part. So, like many games, just walk around. The blood comes from the other side of the corridor and click and stuff. He was attacked in the other room. Piece it together, I guess. Hmm. The evidence suggests that the events began in the lounge. How did Baccarini encounter his murderer? So, yeah, as you can see, this is how you investigate. The table must have been really heavy, or maybe it was thrown extremely hard. You don't have to do much L.A. Noir type stuff, but some of that, the elements from that game are in it, are present in this. A perfectly circular dent, as if someone had tried to hammer in a gigantic bolt, around four inches in diameter. Can I 
Our fingernails scratched the wood. Blood ran like water. It's one of those elements where you examine an item. Did it break during the struggle, or was it already broken? Blood. Blood everywhere. Oh, yeah, that's a real observation there. Oh, man, look at the blood. What kind of person takes off a wristwatch without unfastening it? Or fastens the strap again after taking it off? Good question. This was opened recently. <laughs> Those animations sometimes. Robot man. Smells of whiskey. <coughs> Glass on the floor indicates the window was broken from outside. All right. Somebody busted through the window. There's something under there. How did it wind up under there? Not one round fired. It must have happened fast. It must have happened really fast. You can't shoot your gun. Damn. those things up like caviar they lap those things up like caviar like a true bachelor he should have put these into soak hours of scraping to get them clean although at this stage I don't think Baccarini's too worried about that four glasses two of water two of wine I've always been a whiskey man but I know a good wine when I see one Leftover lasagna, and it looks good. Why is it that two out of three Italian gangsters are great cooks? I'll never understand what the deal is with them in cooking. The plates and the glasses leave no room for doubt. Baccarini had company for dinner. Yeah, company. This run that he has is the funniest thing in the game. Ooch, gooch, gooch, gooch. Holy Christ, what the hell are we up against? His eyes were pulled clean out of their sockets. Whoever did this, it wasn't their first time. And if they committed any other murders like this, it's likely that the police found some of the bodies. Must remember to ask Alice. Remember to ask Alice. His teeth were all pulled out before he was killed. The buildup of blood inside his mouth speaks for itself. My massacred this dude, huh? Pity he won't last till Christmas, because he'd almost pass for a tree. There's no doubt the murderer took his time. Pass for a tree? This isn't that. a cut. It's a tear. His hands were ripped off. Who has that kind of strength? Nobody. <laughs> like, seriously, nobody. Once he got stuck in there, looks like the bottom of a glass. It's Baccarini, no doubt about that. Although the one I remember was more together. My tore this dude up. He had a bad day. It takes a strong man to tear that out. Or several. So instead of giving away like the entirety of the story, because this is a story-based game, I'm just going to show you what it's like to piece the board together, and then I'm going to call it quits. 
So let's see. The murderer yeah. tore Baccarini's hands off. So that's part of the mutilation. Let's see what else we got here. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. Yep, then you've been mutilated. Off, teeth torn out. I guess I'll have to rule out criminal intent or a personal angle. Baccarini's eyes still haven't shown up. What if I look for whatever was used to remove them? We don't have that yet, so we're going to move on to the facts of the assault. A pistol, fully loaded. Pistol. Dirty plates, glasses, and silverware from a dinner for oh, two. That's wrong. Pieces of glass from the window in the hall, found in some broken whiskey glass, found in the dining room. An open bottle of whiskey. I'd say Baccarini was drinking in the dining room when his assailant burst in through the window. Baccarini I pulled his gun. But the murderer disarmed him before he could shoot. What like how this part is about how did it ha like what they were doing before it happened instead of like being about what happened to them. Where did the torture begin? Of blood, one on either side of the dining room table. A blood-stained wristwatch with a glass broken and a strap fastened. Dirty plates, glasses, and silverware from a dinner for two. This is a broken what whiskey glass. Right? No. The broken table scratched. The blood stains show that the murderer began to torture Vaccarini on the dining table itself. As you can see, you can't fail this. His were torn so. off. As a result, his wristwatch fell to the ground. How did the body reach its current position? The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass. The lamp torn off its bracket. Vaccarini already minus hands, was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. And that's in essence all you pretty much will do during the investigation. You'll walk around, discover stuff, and piece it together. That's pretty much the game. But, as far as a game goes, it's pretty interesting. I'm not completely sold on the first episode, but if you really like detective games or whatnot, you might find some intrigue in this game right here. It's not going to blow anybody's minds, but I do like the art style. Like, the art is beautiful. Like, one of the sections has, like, uh, a moving, it's like a moving shooting gallery with words popping up and stylistic beauty. And I really like it. So, so far, so good in this game. It's pretty average so far, but... It's got many more episodes to go, so uh, I'll give it a wait for a sale, if anything. But anyway, this has been Kevin Jones. Anyway, this has been Kevin Jones holding it down for the Citadel. See you guys next time.